everyone, I'm Sophia with Awaken Catholic, and this is Awaken the Saint. People are often stubborn and resist instruction and advice. When we're still kids, many of us learn to disobey our parents, peers, and just about everyone else. But not Saint Athanasia. She was perfectly obedient. Athanasia was born in Greece sometime around the year 790. Her parents brought her up in the faith, and she learned to read the Psalms at a very young age. It seemed like a given that she would enter a monastery, but her parents hoped she would marry while she was still young. Out of obedience, she married an army officer, but this marriage lasted just a little over two weeks before he was killed in battle. Suddenly, free of her obligations, Athanasia looked into joining a convent, but found her plans abruptly foiled. Emperor Michael II issued an edict commanding widows to take new husbands. Once again, Athanasia obeyed and married a second time. Fortunately, her new husband admired her faith and shared in it. They became a force of good in their community, allowing strangers into their home and assisting the poor and sick. Recognizing Athanasia's devotion to God, her husband decided to become a monk and allow her to become a nun. After giving away her property, she joined a convent, and in time, the sisters there came to admire her so much that they asked her to become the abbess. She accepted this role with humility, making herself a servant in every way, and was very severe in her practice of poverty. She ate only a little bread each morning and slept very little, preferring to dedicate her time to prayer. She lived in this way for four years, until a monk named Matthew came in contact with her and felt called to suggest an even more remote location for her and her sisters. Athanasia accepted this offer founding a monastery in the place the monk had shown her. After Athanasia miraculously healed a man of affliction in his eyes, many people began to seek her out, even in a faraway monastery. The rise in popularity enabled the building of several churches, but despite the good that came of it, Athanasia wasn't comfortable being a celebrity. To avoid being constantly pursued by her admirers, she fled her monastery to live in a different convent in Constantinople. It wasn't long before her fellow sisters, missing her guidance and example, discovered where she was and begged her to return. She agreed, returning to their side and continued her life of prayer and service despite the distractions that came with her popularity. Athanasia spent her final days with her sisters in fervent prayer and died in the year 860, but the local belief in her miracles didn't fade. A year after her burial, some people led a demon-possessed woman to the saint's grave, hoping that contact with the body would cure her. Not only was the woman cured, but when Athanasia's coffin opened, her body was found perfectly preserved, incorrupt. Throughout her life, Athanasia was unfailingly meek. She was obedient to the word of her parents and the emperor and humble before her sisters when they asked for her leadership. She obeyed others, not because she didn't have the strength to disobey, but because she considered herself a humble servant to one and all, most especially to God. Saint Athanasia of Aegina, pray for us.